Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. You know the drill. We're ranking all the Pillars of Eternity classes. If you need a refresher on basic mechanics, there's a link in the description to my 2023 Pillars of Eternity Beginner's Guide. Let's jump into the fifth class of this series, Fighter. Fighters have a heavy focus on martial capabilities, endurance regeneration, and melee defense. The core mechanic of this class is constant recovery, which regenerates endurance at a modest rate during combat. Fighters get a plus one bonus to athletics, lore, and survival. Second win from athletics is very useful for tanks, lore is great for any class your main character takes, and the endurance regeneration from survival stacks with constant recovery, so honestly these are all great options. Fighters get average endurance, high health, very high accuracy, and very high deflection. This makes them fantastic frontline fighters, and more specifically, they are great tanks. Starting at level 1, you have two abilities to choose from. Knockdown can be activated twice per encounter and knocks an enemy prone for 5 seconds, which reduces their dexterity by 2, reflex and deflection defenses by 10, and the enemy cannot take any actions. You will also do a full attack, which adds the damage from both weapons if you hit successfully. This is a powerful debuff, but you really need it to last longer, so I would let other party members focus on applying it. The other option is Discipline Barrage, which gives you a bonus of plus 20 to accuracy for 15 seconds. It's worth noting that the cast time is instant, so this is very easy to use and I recommend you pick it up. At level 2 you get additional talents to choose from. If you selected Knockdown at level 1, then you'll now have access to Bonus Knockdown, which gives you one additional use of Knockdown. Obviously, if you are determined to use this ability, then this is an option to consider. Rapid Recovery increases the endurance regeneration rate of constant recovery by a considerable amount. If you combine this with the regeneration from survival and perhaps one item that adds regeneration as well, it's definitely noticeable and makes your fighter significantly more tanky. At level 3, you get access to three additional fighter abilities. Defender increases the amount of enemies you can engage by 2 while reducing your deflection by 5. Since fighters get very high deflection, the penalty is negligible. As I mentioned in the beginner's guide, all characters have one base engagement slot. Gear can allow you to raise this stat, but fighters can stack it higher than any other class. Keep in mind that having higher engagement slots doesn't automatically mean enemies will stick to you. A ton of factors decide why an enemy chooses to engage, including deflection rating, damage resistance, distance, and it appears at least to some degree the damage your character does is factored in as well. Whether or not more slots helps you depends on how you approach combat. The game doesn't provide a reliable way for you to taunt, so getting enemies to actually engage can be difficult. The easiest way to make it happen is to send your tank into combat first while the rest of your party is either at a distance or stealth. That way the enemies will crowd around that character and become engaged, making it much safer for your backline characters to enter the fray. While this is effective, keep in mind that engagement's usefulness is front loaded. As the fight wears on, it will become more likely that enemies will attempt to break engagement or in many fights, additional groups of enemies will join the fray and engage whoever they like. If you are going to focus on this feature, it helps to have your fighter focus on disengagement attacks, which will trigger when enemies attempt to break engagement. This means your fighter cannot be a defense only brick while the rest of your party focuses on damage. It's very important that when enemies disengage, your fighter is fully capable of punishing them. One final note is that some enemies have ways to get around engagement without taking a penalty. This means that no matter how fantastic your tank is, all of your party must be prepared to deploy defensive measures when enemies inevitably get past your front line. Confident Aim gives you a 20% chance to convert grazes to hits and a 20% increase to your melee weapon's minimum damage. Defender is really nice, I like it for my tanks, but I also kind of feel like you can wait until later in order to pick it up, like around level 7, so there's a case to be made that at this time, Confident Aim is the better pickup. Guardian Stance gives all allies within 2 meters a bonus of plus 10 to deflection while reducing your accuracy by 10 as well. This is potentially a useful choice if most of your party is composed of frontline fighters. 
Otherwise, I think Defender is a superior defensive option. At level 4, if you select a Defender at level 3, then the Wary Defender talent will now be available. It adds a plus 5 bonus to all defenses other than Deflection. As a tank, all the defenses are important to you, so this is a worthy pickup. At level 5, you get 3 more talent options. Vigorous Defense gives you a plus 20 bonus to all defenses for a decent length of time. It's available once per encounter and can be cast instantly. No question, this is an option you'll want to pick up. Next, you could choose to specialize in one weapon category. This will provide you with a 15% increase to damage for all weapons in that category. Again, great damage is crucial regardless of whether or not you serve as a tank, so this is another great pickup. Finally, Into the Fray pulls one target within 5 meters to your fighter while also dealing pierce damage and dazing the target if the hit is successful. Daze reduces accuracy by 10, attack speed by 15%, and dexterity, intellect, and perception are reduced by 2. This ability is available twice per encounter, but you must have a clear line of sight to the target in order for the pull to occur. Personally, I don't use this because I prefer my fighter to just focus on the largest swarm of enemies while my off tank or range characters pick off the soft targets. However, if you want a way to pull in annoying enemies, this is certainly a worthy choice. At level 7, several options are added to your list. Armored Grace reduces your armor speed penalty by 20%, making it significantly easier to wear the heaviest armors in the game. No question, this is a great pickup. Unbending causes 50% of the damage you take to be converted into healing over time for a decent stretch of time. It's available 3 times per rest and can be cast instantly. Obviously this is great no matter what, but it's even better if you have invested in health regeneration options. If you are playing as a tank, you should strongly consider picking this up. Clear Out is available twice per rest and swings your weapon in a 2.5 meter, 135 degree cone. If your attack connects, it will deal crush damage, push the enemy 5 meters, and knock them prone for a short period of time. I like Armored Grace and Unbending more, but this is definitely a nice damage option. Overbearing Guard causes your disengagement attacks to knock enemies prone. These attacks already receive a bonus to attack and damage, so despite this talent's wording, it doesn't actually make those attacks more powerful. If you are focusing on using engagement to control the battlefield, this can help tremendously, as your fighter will knock down enemies who try to pass by. Once again, just keep in mind there are multiple situations where an enemy will pass without engaging, and therefore this talent will not be triggered. Finally, Fearless will make you immune to the frightened and terrified statuses. Priests have spells that can create similar immunities, but it can still be nice to have this on your tank depending on your playstyle. At level 8, if you previously selected a weapon specialization, you'll unlock a weapon mastery option in that same category. This will increase your damage by an additional 10%. At level 9, you unlock Critical Defense, which reduces 20% of crits to hits and 10% of hits to grazes, another great way to shore up your defenses. Quick note before we review the last three levels, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate you hitting the like button. This information lets me know which videos the community is enjoying. If you want to support this kind of content, please consider becoming a member of the channel where you will get access to full playthrough episodes. At level 11, you unlock two new fighter abilities. Unbroken is a passive that automatically triggers once per encounter when your endurance falls below 1%. You'll revive with 100 endurance, a bonus of plus 10 to deflection, fortitude, reflex, and will defenses, and a plus 5 bonus to damage reduction. If your fighter is serving in a tank role, this is an absolute must-have ability. Take the Hit is a modal ability that creates a 2 meter friendly aura. Allies within the aura take half damage and the other half is given to the fighter as raw damage which will bypass your defenses. If you are playing with multiple off tanks that are more damage focused then this can be useful to help keep them on their feet but otherwise I don't think it serves much purpose. At level 13 you unlock two more abilities. Sundering Blow is available twice per encounter and it does decent crush damage, reduces a target's damage reduction by 8 for 8 seconds and increases your melee damage by 20%. This is interesting, but as you can tell, there are a lot of great fighter abilities, and I don't think this one makes the cut. 
Charge is available twice per encounter and allows you to dash into a spot within 10 meters, dealing significant crush damage to any enemies caught in your path. This is great if you like to get your fighter into a particular spot during combat. Personally, I just let him run into the middle of the group and draw traffic, so I don't find this ability to be particularly useful. Finally, at level 15, Triggered Immunity is a passive that can occur twice per encounter. When your fighter loses 10% or more endurance from one attack, you will automatically gain immunity to that damage for 15 seconds. Yet another monster defensive ability that makes fighter a fantastic choice if you want to tank. Overall, I rank this class a C. This is basically the Paladin Sela rating all over again for those of you who watch my Wrath of the Righteous class ranking series. If you want a fighter on the team, it's almost certainly to tank. If you want a damage dealing melee option, then Paladin, Barbarian, Rogue, and potentially Monk are all better selections. If you want a tank on your team, there is just no advantage to leaving Edder on the bench and rolling your own fighter. From a personality standpoint, he's flat out one of the best party members in gaming, and from a mechanic standpoint, Point, you gain little by trying to create your own fighter. Therefore, from my perspective, this class option doesn't really do anything for you as a player. It's certainly not terrible, so I just rank it a C, but I don't see any reason to select it. That completes my ranking of the fighter class. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. Take care!